Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. My name is Jess, and today we're planting potatoes. Now, as promised, I'm going to make a video and share the method that we use to grow potatoes. Um, I'm actually fairly new to growing potatoes. I've grown some before and like tried different containers and different things, but last year was my first year to really grow a lot. And man, we grew a lot of potatoes. It worked really well for us, and so we're just doing it the same way again. I'm actually tucked away in my high tunnel right now, hiding from the wind, because it is pretty windy. But we have prepared a bed. Oh, bear, what did you get into? Where did you just go? So we've actually prepared a bed right next to the high tunnel. Um, it is the space where we have run chickens and pigs so the soil has been worked we used this as a garden space last year and we did go ahead and till it this year last year i grew my potatoes on a place that i had not tilled but i was able to lay things down and add a lot of compost on top of it as long as you have six or so inches of reasonably loose soil i think you'll probably be fine but we are going ahead and piling up some compost on top of our tilled bed area. Not a lot, just hilling it up into small mounds where we will plant our potatoes in those mounds. All right, so let's come out here and see. So I have Ben Turn here with me today. Say hello, Ben Turn. Hey guys. My lovely assistant, and he is helping me move the soil back here, carrying it back with the tractor and straightening it out. So I'm gonna put the camera down and help him. And as you can see, we're doing these rows Last year I did like four foot rows and did just multiple rows of potatoes in each mound. This year we decided to do it a little bit differently doing skinnier mounds so that we can just walk up and down the space easier. So your spacing doesn't matter a ton whenever you're putting potatoes down. You don't have to do like, we've got about 12 inch mounds and I'm gonna do one row of potatoes down the middle. Uh, and last year we did like four foot mounds that we did three rows down. What I do is I plant my potatoes whole and um, that is a personal preference. You can also, what's called chit them, which is where you cut them up and you lay them out like on your porch or in your garage, somewhere where they're open to the air and allow the cut sides to kind of scab over. And you basically want to have one or two eyes per piece that you plant. And um, in chitting potatoes, you're gonna end up with more plants for your seed potatoes. And if you're trying to get bigger potatoes, planting them spaced out like that is a really good idea. Now, I like harvesting my potatoes small. Uh, we just like them better that way. Think of it like whenever you're planting baby salad greens. Whenever you plant all those plants really close together, if you're gonna harvest them really small, it doesn't matter. But if you're trying to get them bigger, they're gonna be in competition with one another. And each one of those eyes of those potatoes is gonna sprout out into kind of like a plant. And so essentially you're gonna create baby potatoes the way you say you would create baby salad greens by planting the potatoes whole. Personal preference, if I'm being completely honest, the reason why I've planted my potatoes whole and why I am this time is because this is a task that's been on my list for like two weeks and I just haven't gotten around to it because it needed so much soil to be moved and I needed a nice day when the ground wasn't sopping wet it's been raining so much and I didn't chip my potatoes two weeks ago when I was first planning on planting potatoes and then things keep coming up to keep me from doing this and I'm finally like whatever I'm just gonna get them in the ground a lot of the seed potatoes I'm planting are smaller anyway so I just don't feel the need to cut them up So I want to reiterate, you don't have to lay down a fresh layer of compost in order to plant potatoes. However, it doesn't hurt. Having the extra nutrients anytime you're trying to plant plants is good. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I had this compost. And so I'm going to go ahead and put it down. But just a couple of inches on top of the loose soil is going to be plenty. But I could just plant these into freshly tilled soil and that would be okay. And then I'm gonna get them covered. You, you mostly just need that handful of inches of nice loose soil to put them in. Now 
Now this is like a 40 by 60 garden spot. So many of you are not gonna plant this many potatoes. Maybe not this year, maybe in the future, but for those of you who are just getting started and you think, well, I don't have the space to put in a big garden like that, to till it, to bring in a bunch of compost, a really cool way to plant potatoes is that they, they grow pretty well in a kiddie pool. As long as it is one that has about eight inches of depth, and you fill it up with soil and then tuck the potatoes in like you'll see me do in a second and mound straw up on top of them it's actually a good way and i've known many people who have successfully harvested a lot of potatoes in their classroom waiting room by doing it that way Lots of straw. huh there were 10 bales 10 bales of straw okay great thank you i gotta go get the potatoes all right thanks All right, so depending on where you got your potatoes and how late you are in your season, they may be in various states of sprouting. So a lot of times you'll just have potatoes that have an eye or a little sprout coming off of them like this. Some of these seed potatoes that I'm planting are from the potatoes we harvested last June that started to sprout and I saved them for seeds. So they're looking a little more advanced. And I had them down in my basement so they were really searching for light. So them, some of them have some like really tall sprouts on them, which is fine. How I do this is I've got my loose soil mounded, doesn't have to be super high. Again, like six to eight inches of loosened soil. And I just kind of tuck these things down into the soil like this. If they do have sprouts, sometimes I'll leave them somewhat sticking out. This is all gonna get covered with um, straw. And a lot of times if I have like a sprout break off with an eye on it like this, I just go ahead and stick that in the soil because that's, that'll grow. And I'm looking to space these out around like six to eight inches apart. If you want larger potatoes, you either need to cut them like I was talking about earlier where you're just putting one or two eyes in place or give them more space. You can space them out as much as like 12 inches apart. And I'm gonna go down each one of these rows. I'm planting a variety of potatoes. I got some Yukon Golds, uh, some Adirondack Blues, French Fingerlings that were left over from last year. If you're in a place that you're behind me and you're planning on pa planting potatoes, it's good to buy those earlier rather than waiting until you're ready to put them in the ground. And just, the worst that's gonna happen is they're gonna sprout more while you wait. So just put them in a place that's well ventilated uh, while you wait to get your spot ready because a lot of times uh, seed potatoes sell out in different places. So I'm going to go across this whole garden and we are just going to put these potatoes in, nuzzling them in. They're not going super super deep into the soil, maybe an inch under the soil, and then covering them up. And then we're gonna mulch the whole thing. All right, so we got all of the potatoes in, down every row. I did change plans just a little bit in the middle of this by leaving some space on the end. And I'm gonna flatten that soil we healed up out because I was gonna plant some cutting sunflowers back here. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is mulch these potato mounds with straw. Right now, I'm just gonna start with a couple inch layer. I'm not trying to just put a ton on there, but essentially I want those potatoes to begin to root out into the soil but work their way up through the straw. And in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna come and put another layer of straw in and I'm gonna do that a few times. Now this is pretty much the Ruth Stout method of growing potatoes. Ruth Stout was just a pioneer in gardening and she is the one who brought a lot of popularity to straw mulch decades ago. And really just this idea that you can work smarter not harder in the garden. But without how I grow potatoes I do add that compost down just because that nutrition I think helps with a better yield. And then we very shallowly plant those potatoes just barely underneath the soil and we're mulching with straw. There's one thing that I want to touch on though that can be kind of confusing for people when they get into growing potatoes. Um, like tomatoes, potatoes come in either indeterminate or determinate and the difference between the two is basically a determinate variety is going to grow to a determined size and set a determined amount of blossoms it's not going to just keep growing the more that you offer it support 
So with an indeterminate potato, you can continue to mound those up and they'll just keep growing. But with a determinate variety, they're not gonna do that. And if you wanna find out whether you have an indeterminate or determinate variety, just do an internet search. Like for instance, like an Adirondack blue, is an Adirondack blue potato an indeterminate or determinate? And usually that information pops up very readily. And it's the same thing with tomatoes or anything like that you're trying to grow. You can always look that up. And that's what I do. I do not know off the top of my head every variety that I try what it is. I have to look those things up. It's gotten really popular on Pinterest where you'll see like potato towers and stuff like that where they're you know this tall and you can plant the potatoes and just keep adding more soil and you get tons and tons of potatoes. Uh, it only works ideally like that if you're growing an indeterminate variety of potatoes. And most of the potatoes that I have grown and that I have seed potatoes for are determinants. So I can't just keep mulching them and pushing them to grow more and more and more. So what I'm doing and what I did last year and what I will do this year and continue to do uh, because it's working well is plant them not super deep in loose soil with inches of loose soil underneath mulch once a couple of inches. The plants are gonna grow up through that and then in a couple of weeks, I'll mulch again and then I'll probably mulch one more time. So at that point, they're gonna be in about six inches of loose soil at least with other soil underneath it that might not be quite as loose. It's clay underneath that bed. And then on top of that, they're gonna have six to eight good inches of straw mulch. And last year, the way this worked, which I have a video of digging potatoes, I'll link it down below. It's ludicrous because I'm scared of bugs and it was kind of embarrassing but I uh, was able to just move that mulch to the side and the potatoes were pretty much sitting there right at the top of that nice loose soil compost and there wasn't a lot of actual real digging down and like groundbreaking that was required because piling the mulch up and allowing the plants to grow up through the mulch and then bush up on top of the mulch the potatoes were all able to grow in that loose layer of soil and it was very nice we had really really good uh, potatoes they they were like pretty Pretty and, and round they weren't weirdly shaped or anything like that they obviously didn't have to struggle in compact soil and also we do get a good deal of rain here but because of having so much mulch it keeps the ground nice and moist uh, so the plants never had to struggle for that I didn't have to water them a whole lot, but even if you did water them with mulch, it's going to be extending the amount, amount of time that the ground's staying moist with your watering. And also, because when you put a lot of mulch on soil, you are basically keeping it loose. You're keeping it from getting compact. It's not getting baked. There's not a lot of evaporation coming out, on it, out of it. And so there is a lot of life in heavily mulched soil, and that's kind of the point. Now you may notice I didn't put a ton of mulch down in the walkways uh, because right now we just ran the tractor over these and they're pretty compact. The next time we mulch, once there are potato plants coming up, therefore our mounds are very distinctive so we'll know uh, where not to walk, we will go ahead and lay a layer of that straw mulch down in the walkways as well, just so we don't have to battle weeds in the walkways of this patch. All of these potato plants that we just put in, we will begin to harvest maybe some like new potatoes, the little ones, like the end of June. And then we will really pull them all in probably like early to mid July. They will grow big plants that are really beautiful. Of course, we're gonna mulch them a couple more times and this will be very, very green. And of course, we interspersed all of the varieties. So when we go to dig them, it'll be like a little surprise party. We won't know what color potato we're gonna be pulling out of the ground. But they will flower uh, mid to end of June ish and then I'm a little later getting them in this year than I was last year but they will flower and then two two weeks later or so is when you start digging them after they flower sometimes potatoes do develop a fruit on the plant it's like a green kind of tomato ish looking fruit but you don't eat that you just eat the tubers so thank you guys for hanging out with us today and planting uh, it is very exciting to me whenever we do a, a job like this although it's not one of the easiest things to put in the ground because of moving the compost and of course a lot of bending and stuff. You definitely feel it, but uh, this yields so much food and it lends to so much of our food sustainability because while we have fresh vegetables coming in throughout the year and of course we preserve that stuff and we grow our own meat, having potatoes in a house with five boys definitely uh, fills the plate up and fills the bellies up. So thank you again. I bless you. Until next time.